Welcome back to our segment on navigating real estate communication without an agent. In this episode, we're diving into the world of inspections and appraisals, incredibly crucial steps in the overall home selling process. Now, when it comes to inspections and appraisals, preparation is key. If you've accepted an offer contingent on inspections, expect to have the buyer's inspection scheduled almost immediately. Any delay in allowing the inspections to take place could mean delays in negotiations of the findings and ultimately of your closing. Your buyer will choose their preferred home inspectors and then they or their agent will schedule the inspections based on the inspector's most immediate availability. Depending on the systems in your home, there may be multiple inspectors to contend with. Be ready to host the inspectors, your buyers, and their agent for two to four hours on average during the inspection appointment and make sure all the major systems in your home are easily accessible for the inspectors, including the attic and any crawl spaces. Remember, the buyer is paying these inspectors a considerable amount of money to be extremely thorough and report everything, no matter how minor or seemingly nitpicky that they find. Fight the urge to be combative and to try to explain away the things that come up. This is not a personal attack although it may feel that way in the moment. The inspector is just doing the job they were hired to do, and if the buyer has a strong agent on their side who's set realistic expectations, the majority of the minor findings will likely be overlooked in the end. You getting defensive risk positioning yourself as an unreasonable seller when your goal is to keep the conversation going and encourage the buyer to present anything concerning so you have the chance to negotiate rather than get hit with a release request without explanation. Now, the appraiser will be designated by the buyer's lender if the buyer is utilizing financing for their purchase, and they will contact you directly to coordinate an appointment to visit your property to conduct the appraisal. Now, this appointment is surprisingly short and less comprehensive in comparison to a home inspection, typically only taking 15 to 45 minutes depending on the size of the property. It will also typically just be you and the appraiser. The buyer and their agent don't usually attend this one, so lucky you. Be prepared to provide a comprehensive list of any major improvements that have been done, like the windows, roof, or boiler being replaced, for example, including the year they were completed. Now, notice we emphasized major again. Your cousin Jimmy painting your shed last spring does not qualify as major and can make it appear that you're grasping at straws to justify the value you need. Now, you can also provide the comps that you use to determine your list price in segment one to make sure that the appraiser is at least considering those same recently sold properties that you did in determining your value. But keep in mind that depending on the length of time between when you listed your property and when the appraisal is conducted, the comps may be too old and need to be updated, which can be good or possibly a bad thing. Now, be flexible and accommodating in coordinating schedules and plan ahead to provide all necessary access to the property. Overall, being prepared for inspections and appraisals is vital to getting to the finish line. Make sure your home is clean, accessible, and any necessary documentation is readily available. Depending on the type of financing your buyer is using, there may be different things the appraiser will look for and you should do your research to make sure you're one step ahead of them before they arrive. This not only expedites the process but also leaves a positive impression and keeps you in the driver's seat as much as possible. In our next episode, we'll explore communication in relation to the documentation necessary for a real estate transaction. Stay tuned for more valuable tips on selling your home without a real estate agent, and don't forget to share your experiences or questions in the comments below. See you in episode four.